Beloved brothers and sisters, members of this New Life Church, Nairobi, all in attendance, and my dear viewers online, I take this opportunity, and in the name of Jesus, I greet you, wave to the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Uh, when I woke up, I felt I had the grace of the Lord, I had the joy of the Lord, had the peace of the Lord. But when I have come to this house of worship here, I feel great, I feel I'm carried. And some of the very fascinating programs are the children's programs. They have brought out a powerful message in a very practical way. And may God bless the children's ministry. The choir that just left here, I think you have stolen my heart. The message is good. It is inspiring. I nearly gave you 99%. Was it thought that you were not in uniform? <laughs> if you were in uniform, I would give you 99%. But my teacher told me only God can get 100%. So, otherwise, it is a wonderful ministry. As we come to the grand climax of the 10 days of prayers, we are expecting an experience that is approaching that of the Pentecostal days that was based in the Bible. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for having participated. And I want to tell you that sustain your efforts because... The best is yet to come. So now, for you to still continue aligning yourselves, those in attendance here, my viewers online, I am still asking that you maintain the attitude of prayer. So thank you very much that you have been there, you have been tuning in, and one more time, we are asking that you be very keen. For you to tap maximally on the blessings, I had advised that you take advantage of the bonus programs that were prepared by this New Life Church here in Nairobi, and I'm glad that many of you have cooperated in the same. So I want to tell you what is still lined up for you. We have baptism, and today I'm asking that as we baptize those ones that have had the courage to take a stand for the Lord, I am asking that uh, you, we also prepare to be rebaptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. Already I can see a baptism through the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is joy. And I observed as the choir was singing, they were extremely happy, but two stood out. And this was Chacha and Jeff. They were already behaving as though they were in heaven. I wanted to remind them that we are still in the world. But this tells us an important principle. When you believe, when you take salvation, you take Jesus as a personal savior, already the kingdom of God starts from here, the kingdom of grace, while we await the kingdom of glory. So I'm so overwhelmed. You read with this overwhelm, uh, overwhelmed, uh, the way I've been overwhelmed, you need to really pray for me so that I can be able to be composed again. So what is lined up for you? We already have said there is baptism. This afternoon, the walls of Jericho are falling. We are going to have special prayers. And it's still going to be an online program. And I can even tell you the message that we are going to tap from. The text, it is Acts chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. As they prayed and the doors were opened, we are going to pray. And the doors that have been closed are going to be opened. The chains fell, the foundations were shaken. In short, there was explosive power and we are expecting nothing short of that. We are also going to have another one more bonus activity, a night of prayer, a night vigil. 
that night vigil. I want to give you the mode of the night vigil. First of all, we are going to have it physically here. I will be here, and I'm encouraging that as many as possible that can make it, come over here, because the Bible says this is, this is a house that is called a house of prayer. But because of our love of those ones that have been tuning in here, it will also be virtual. So we are doing a hybrid, physical and virtual. So there will be Zoom, and uh, I don't know, as soon as possible, we should give the link for the same. If it was there, it should have been given even from now, so that we are set for the same. But I believe soon after this, the link will be there. And uh, maybe we shall even advertise it in YouTube, so that nobody has an excuse. Now, there was a very important program. Those ones who are inviting friends, we encourage that we invite friends. So I want to ask today, who has invited a friend, and especially those ones who may not be Adventists, or those ones who used to come to church, but with the time the excitement went down, uh, but now they are here. So if you invited a friend, you raise up your hand. I want to see. If you invited a friend, ah, praise the Lord. Hands up, hands up. There is life in New Life Nairobi. Hands up. This is what makes Christ to smile. Uh, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. If you invited a friend, either had backslidden or is a non-Adventist, we're asking that you stand. It is part and parcel of this program here. Thank you, thank you. The friend I mean has made it and is here today. The other days will come later. The friend is here today. If your friend is here today, you stand up because we want to do the last tally. I already have a list here of evangelists. Okay. Uh, where is your friend? Oh. How many are they? Five of them, three of them, Adventists, non-Adventists. Okay, category three or category five? Category five means non-Adventists. Category three, backslider. Shout it. Three and five. So, uh, where is Ruth? Shout your name so that we can do the final tally. Ruth, for a moment. Okay. Then we want another one. Also shout your name and say the visitor. Tell us the visitor. Shout, shout. Your name is Janet. Okay. Where is your friend? Raise up your hand. Aha, uh -huh, that's beautiful. So how many marks? Five marks. Do the tally. Okay. We also have, shout your name. Harriet? Marion, yes. Uh, how many friends? One has come today. Okay. Backslider, non-Adventist? Adventist. Okay. Can the friend raise their hand? Olivia. She's over there. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, because this is a very important group, I hope you have done the computation. Ah, there is another one there. Shout your name. Go ahead, say your name. My name is Edward. Say it again. Edward is my name. Edward. Yes. How many did you invite? One. One. Where is the one? Okay. Category? Non-Adventist. Aha. Uh -huh. Edward, five marks. Edward, five marks. There's another one there. Shout your name. Lillian. Lillian. How, how many friends? Three. Three. Category? Adventist. 
Adventists. Yes. Okay, three marks for, did you say Lillian? Yes. Okay, three marks for Lillian. Okay. Now, ah, there is another one. I'm telling you, the church is more active than I thought. Happy Sabbath. I, we invited uh, one friend who has come today. Category of the friend? Five. Five, Five marks. Can the friend raise up the hand? His name is Meshak Dulo. I'm not seeing the friend. Aha, uh -huh, fine. So you said your name is? Phyllis. Phyllis, five marks. Phyllis, five marks. Okay. Is there another one? Aha, uh -huh, at the far end. Dash there, dash there. Okay, there is a mic, mic there. Make use of it. Sprint. My name is Prince Alwin. Say it again. My name is Prince Alwin. Prince who? Somebody Alwin. Prince. Yes. How I many friends? One. Category? Adventist. Okay, one mark for Prince. All right, all right. Thank you very much, Prince. God bless you. Okay, is there anybody else? Yes. Okay, okay. Say the name. Hi. My yes. name is Joy. I've invited a child, a non-Adventist child. He can speak for himself. Ah, you said it's Joyce? I am Joy. And your name? My name is Joy. Dalvin. 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 He is Dalvin. Okay. A child. God bless you, Daniel. Okay, there is another one here. So, five marks for Joy. Five marks for Joy. Uh -huh. I'm Isaac Osonga. I invited a friend called Jared. He's the other side. He's category three. Group three? Yes. Three marks for Wesonga. Uh huh. Okay. Maybe we are through. As many as did, we will recognize. Because really, this is the very essence of our ministry here in the church. Okay, now, since it's so important. I will ask that all we invited visitors in category three and in category five, as we do the song 218, I'll want you to come up front here because as a church we want to see the evangelists and missionaries. Please kindly, if you invited and they came any other time of these 10 days of prayer, or if they logged in into our channel, come over here. Not just for today, even yet, any other time of this period of 10 days. And the friends can also come with you. as a church, I want to bring it to your attention that when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to missionary work, these are the people you have. These are the active ones. Among them, I said I would identify the top ten. And the top ten, I said, there is something I'll do for them. 
like Peter and John, I will not give them money, but I'll pray for them for a period of at least one year. And all this year, I'll want their records. If ever you did invite one in category three, one in category five, you will enjoy my blessings for a period of at least one month. But the top ten, one year. And I said, I will extend this had said until tomorrow midnight so that we can have a few more. But now I say Monday midnight because I realize after the night vigil, quite a number may be sleeping and resting. So it has gone to Monday midnight. If you can still have those ones who are, you are linking, you are giving our link, and they join, you can give a report and be honest, and I'll pray for you for a period of one month. So when you do that, you can report to this number, 722 475 364. But be honest, if you have not had, like these ones who are honest, if you have not yet linked somebody, don't just say I've been linked, I've linked somebody, so pray for me for a period of one month. You know, when you are dishonest, the prayers may not even work. So from this group here now, let me see whether we are the non Adventists and the, those ones who have not been coming. Raise up your hands. Please raise up your hands. You are very important people to us. Those who are not SDS, but because of the love of God, they say today we are coming. Raise up your hands. God bless you abundantly. And church, what do you tell them? Amen. Should this be the, the last time? No, we want, we want you to be coming. The church says, come again and again. We love you. The church loves you. Now, of these ones here now, top, then, top ten are these ones. When I call you, stand here so that... Uh, uh, personal ministries department when you have an activity of this, uh, of this nature evangelism, don't even be afraid to spend resources on them because they will give you results so number 10 we have Mother Bore stand here Mother Bore come quickly like a soldier she scored 39 marks Number nine, we have Sheba. She scored 44 marks. Where is Sheba? You stand next here. Mother, stand here. Here, right here. Yes. Number eight, we have Elder Wesonga with 47 marks. The criteria is how friendly you are and how invi you invited people to church. Number seven is Ryan Oyugi with 65 marks. Know your missionaries and evangelists in the church. Where is Ryan? Maybe she's absent. Maybe she's absent. Number six is Ruth Ogando with 71 marks. And this was also a secretary. God bless you. Number five is Ruth Kirui with 74 marks. God bless you. Number four is Irene Omundi with 79 marks. Aha. Number three is Doroth Nyarang Go. Something like that. Stand here, follow the order, follow the order. Nobody should stand behind me, the ones I call. I hope the order is followed. When I arrange you, don't disorganize. How soon did you dismantle the order? Okay. Number three, I said, Doroth Nyarango. No, I don't think that is the order. You know, I'm calling from number 10 coming this way. Fine. Doroth has 123 marks. Next now, and you can see this side men are becoming very rare. 
So don't be coughing in the church, you men. We know where power lies. Hmm? So number two is Mary Abuya, 159 marks. Where is Mary? Yes, stand here. You can see now men have become very rare here. Number one now, the evangelist, New Life Nairobi for 2022 is Letty or Witty with 413 marks. Where is Letty? Maybe she's not there. Yes. So if you have an event, an evangelistic activity, don't fear spending resources on this lady. She will produce, she will perform, and we are praying for her. I recommend that all these 10 here, the church, get them the book known as Christian Service. And for this one in particular, on top of Christian Service, get a book known as Evangelism. All of them I recommend to the church, get them each a copy of that. So thank you very much, and uh, you will take a proper record, and... Uh, I will ask that the church will sing for them, uh, will uh, be praying for them, and uh, personal ministries department, mark these people very carefully. These ones don't just talk, they talk and they perform, because uh, we have seen their track record. So for that, we can complete the song as we allow them to go back. May God bless them. And before they go back, I will ask that Elder Kali prays for them. Just come and pray for them. Then we shall allow them to go back. Okay, as she prays, the others who were not among the top ten, but did also very well, Emil, Emil Okuku. Where is Emil Okuku? She had 34 marks. Fanis Koyoko. Come over here. Susan Muleo. Mulei. They were not among the top ten, but they performed very well. It's good to know, Ruth, where you are. Who did you work with in compiling this list? Ruth and, and Beatrice. May God bless you. You will give me the, that record. You will pray for them, then we'll allow them, so that this gift is cultivated. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Loving Father, eternal God, we thank you and praise your name. You alone who lives eternally, the immortal God and who lives in an unapproachable light. It's before your presence we come this morning to thank you and praise your name for the blessings that have been ours Lord this 10 days of prayers we thank you for the privilege of prayer and we thank you for allowing us to come in your presence to fellowship with you to bring our gratitude to confess our sins to bring our petitions and requests and as we came, Lord, you also treated us to your word. We praise your name for the very special way you used your servant. And we thank you that uh, you gave us an opportunity to begin exercising the gift of evangelism to reach out to our friends and our relatives uh, to come and share in the blessings that you had for us this week. Standing before you are your children who are active in doing this work. We praise your name for them. We thank you for putting in them the passion to share what they have received with their friends. May you keep them serving you. May you keep them sharing you uh, in their marketplaces, in their neighborhoods, wherever you send them that they can share you with others. We pray, Lord, that you keep them in this spirit. We thank you for you are the one who gives spiritual gifts. 
and you have given this your children the spiritual gift of evangelism see them excel in it and in their making use of this gift may your name be glorified may your church grow may many souls be saved in your kingdom we are witnesses of your sons and daughters who have given themselves to you on account of this meeting and as you bless these who will be baptized we pray that you bless these servants of yours who have been instrumental in walking around the corner to invite friends to come we pray that those who are able to come lord to fellowship with us both here physically and even online that you will keep us together keep us in you and keep us in your kingdom may this be our experience we pray and trust in jesus name amen, amen. we complete that song 218 as they go back thank you very much may god cultivate that gift in you to remind you that until Monday midnight if you still manage to log in a few more you will enjoy my prayers for one month and if you still topple these ones here you can still squeeze yourself into this list of the top 10 and I want to commend all of you for what you have done I'm about to give a testimony but my viewers online we value and for today, I want to tell you that we have had very faithful online audience. And uh, in faithfulness, they are represented by a couple that has been so faithful. If you remember here the midday prayers, we saw a family that was so faithful in praying and giving gifts until they went to God as a memorial, and that was Cornelius. A certain family has been so keenly following us until it has come to the attention of the man of God, the facilitator. And to me, they are the ones that represent the online viewers in faithfulness. And that is none other than the family of John Olela. They have been watching very keenly. It has come to my attention. And as a family, I appreciate you. And on behalf of New Life, we appreciate you. And New Life is beckoning to you. Please come and join us here. Come and join us. We grow together. Thank you very much. They are not alone. I know there are many more others. But that is now the representative of the ones that have been faithful in following us. I want to do now two testimonies as I prepare to give my word. But I want to remind you that the link for the evening meeting, the Zoom meeting, it will come anytime. We'll consult on the same. And for those of you who have been logging online, we want to say that better still, if you still want that communication, if you will not keep on asking for the link, please remember to subscribe. Our dear listeners online, remember to subscribe. If you have enjoyed our ministry here, you still want to enjoy the ministry offered by New Life here in Nairobi, please subscribe. We are waiting for you to do that. And like that, you will be continuously now be fed from our programs. And you could still be notified when anything is lined up that is designed to be a huge blessing for you. So I said I'm sharing my testimonies. 
Me, I like testimonies. I will share two or three testimonies. So the first one, it was shared to me from somebody who did ministry in Burundi, one of the church leaders. They had done, but they had done a ministry like this. People had made decisions, and now they were going to baptize as we are baptizing today. I congratulate the group that we are going to baptize, and the door is still open. Now, when they went to the river, they were confronted by a madman who started pelting and throwing stones at them. So when they went to him to ask what was the problem, what the matter was, he said, this is my river, you have no permission to use it, so I will not allow you to go do the business. So they persuaded him the much they could, but he still said, no, you cannot baptize. After some time, they thought they had struck an agreement with him, so again they went into the business of baptizing. The stones again started. So again they went to negotiate with him. He said, now what's the matter? He said, that is my river. You have no permission. The madman said that. Then they asked him, what can we do for you? He said, there is only one thing you can do for me. If you are baptizing these people, you also baptize me. Then they said, now, this is trouble. I wish he even asked for money. How do we baptize a madman? So after consultation, they said, we have thought about your request. Just allow us to baptize, then uh, we shall uh, talk about uh, your request. He said, no. If I'm to allow you, I'm to be number one to be baptized. That was a real fix. So they went and consulted. They again came to him, they said, we are seriously thinking about your request. Just allow us to baptize. Then we shall talk about your request. He said, no, the condition is you baptize me, number one. They were in such a fix. After much deliberation, they said, and after much deliberation and prayer, they said, if he can take the vows, if he can accept to take the vows, then we can baptize him. And sure enough, they took him through the vows. They explained to him. At that time, he seemed to be sober. Then they said, one more time, you allow us now to baptize, then we shall think about you again. He said, no, the condition is I have to be number one. Finally, they yielded and they baptized him. You know, when he came out of the waters, there was no more sober man in this world. He was sober, and the church leader told me, at the division level told me, he attends church, that time he was a youth, he's now married, and he has children, and no trace of madness. You know, I wondered. No wonder Jesus was baptized, and he had the gift, a special endowment of the Holy Spirit. The other one now, the other testimony, it occurred when I was doing a similar function in Nairobi Central a couple of years ago. Brother Jay, he came to me and he said he had a job, but his ends were not really meeting. He wanted a better job. So he participated in all the programs, the Wednesday praying and fasting. Now then he came to me and specifically he wanted a breakthrough, matters finance. I told him the condition. If you want a permanent solution, you must be faithful in returning the tithe of the Lord. He confessed he had not been faithful, but he said, now, he vowed to the Lord and he said he was going to be faithful. But you know, the following day he surprised me. He came with a letter. I wish I had the letter. The letter was not addressed to me. The letter was addressed to God. And it was something like this. Actually, he was not a member of Nairobi Central. He was then a member of Nairobi East. So when he came, he had a letter. First of all, he asked me, is it wrong 
if all the tithe had robbed God for the four years, because he said, the four years since I got a job, I've never returned tithe from my job. Is it wrong now, if now I return all that I'd stolen? I am moved. The Holy Spirit is moving me in that direction. I said, you know, I preach for God. I'm not above the Holy Spirit. Me, I told you, be faithful from now onwards. If the Holy Spirit has spoken to you and is telling you, return what you are robbed of God, I, I, I work under the Holy Spirit. Do as the Spirit is telling you. So the following day, he did a letter, and he said, God, I'm sorry for all that I've wronged you. And he said, for the four years, I've not yet been returning tithe from my job. I now want to start being faithful, and I want to return all that I dropped. Oh, and he was so serious. He had calculated amounting to the sum of Kenya shillings, 284,000. By the way, I read that letter in Maxwell Church. Then after praying and fasting, he was going for an interview, and he did the interview, and the results were out in the month of February. Those of you who are good in guessing, what do you think the results were? Respond, shout the answer. You got the job? Okay. He got a regret. So now, after the regret, the following day, the landlord was knocking the door. Brother Jay, time for rent. Now, he had the rent, but the rent now was the tithe money. You know, that was a real fix. He had to debate between paying the landlord and returning to the Lord. Is it easy to tithe under such circumstances? No, it's not easy. But he consulted with the wife. They said, we have made a vow to God. Come rain, come sunshine. The tithe of the Lord has to be returned. Now, they told the landlord, we are sorry. Bear with us. We don't have now the money. Bear with us. We shall sort you when it's possible. The following day, he went for another interview at Nanyuki. All I remember is the results when I was hiring to Kisi Central Church. I just saw a message. Pastor, help me in thanking my God. I now have a job. And the salary happens to be the amount I had pledged to give to the Lord, the amount I had robbed God. You remember how much it was? Yes. I know you scale a lot of money here from the look of your faces. But please accept that. This man got a job where he was earning only Kenya shillings, 284,000. And you know, I had read that pledge to Nairobi Central. In my heart, I was praying to God. When I was reading the pledge, did he have the job? No. I told God, give me another opportunity so that now we go and declare this testimony there. And sure enough, God gave me an opportunity, although Pastor Kali can testify to you, it's not easy for a church that you finish 10, day, 10 days of prayer this year and the following year you are there. It happened like that. I went there for 10 days of prayer. Then again in the last minute, they told me the one we had invited is not there. Please come here. So I went there and I was able to declare that uh, testimony there and it touched many, I remember. I remember one lady who was there, she told me, even me, I want to return God what I dropped. If this is the way God is sorting people. It's only to, it's to, she told me, the only problem, mine is not 284,000. I'm still calculating and it's already going to millions, but I'm still determined eh? I'll give God eh, his dues. Now this man here, when I went to preach in Siloam Church, this man here, brother who? Brother Jay. I told him, Brother Jay, I've been talking about how God sorted you. Now that you are here, you live in Nairobi. I will not talk about you. 
I just want you to come and give the testimony by yourself. Actually, I tried to get him this morning. The phone did not go through. I wanted him to come here and testify so that you see the man of the miracle. Now, what I did not tell you, while I was there with him in Nairobi Central, he was a broke man. At times, he would come to church, and I give him fare to use back at his home. When he came to church now, in Sloam, he comes from a part of the country where people know how to move in style, walk in style, act in style. You know those people in Kenya? You don't know them. Who are they? Yes. Let me tell you. This man here, I remember how he'd come to Nairobi Central and I gave him fare back home. When I invited him to Sloam, this man, Omera, Omera came in a heavy, heavy vehicle. I even marveled eh, whether this is the man who was so broke that I used to give him transport back home. I want to tell you, if you move to be faithful to God, God is more than faithful and he'll give you more than your side of the bargain. And with that, I want to invite all of you to the message. And as we share in the message, I want us to pray. My viewers online, I'm inviting you so that we pray together. All in attendance, I'm inviting you so that we pray together. And uh, first item I want you to pray for, pray for yourself. Can you point at that man? Yes, work on that man. Second item, I want you to pray for five people who are gathered here, plus the non-Adventists among us. I saw non-Adventists here. We love you. In fact, if you don't mind, I'll ask that you stand. Because we want to pray for you, that God may touch you in a special way. If you are not very shy, if you are a non-Adventist, yes. Can you shout your name? Faith? Help me to say what she has said. Okay? Kathy. Fine. Kathy. We will pray for Kathy. There was another one. Okay, plus the others. Maybe they are yet to gain courage. But pray for Kathy and the others in a special way. You may now see it. I think we shall remember Kathy. So that is the second one. The third one, pray for the facilitator. Can you point at him? Yes, pray that the power of God will rest upon him, that in turn is going to be a blessing to you. For that, matter, for that reason, I was sent. The fourth reason, the fourth item is the fourth item cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst in the name of Jesus and alongside that pray against any distractions pray for the media broadcasting we have here pray for the audience online that God may touch them they are very dear to us you are very dear to us and pray against the spirit of confusion and a disorder of any kind. And pray for my throat in a special way. The last item, but not the least, invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'll do a quick reminder. Viewers online, please participate in the same. Number one, pray for yourself, that God may open your heart to receive the message and blessings that are set aside for you today. Second item, five people who are gathered here, including your two neighbors, my viewers online, also pray for five, especially those ones you have influenced also to tune into this channel, plus Keith. Third item, pray for the facilitator, pray for me in a special way, that the power of God may rest upon me, that I may be able to deliver what God has sent me in this church here. Fourth item, cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst in the name of? We all have that power and authority, even if you are as small as these uh, children that I'm seeing here. 
and then cast, uh, pray against all distractions. Pray for the media broadcasting program here. Pray for anybody that is trying to tune into this channel here, that there will be no obstacles. And they pray against the spirit of confusion and disorder, and that God may break all the chains of wickedness from those in attendance here and from our viewers online. And finally, invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't know where the chorista is. Chorister, you will be singing 476, stanza one and a chorus, stanza two and a chorus. We don't sing with her as she sings. We, we also, we pray. As she sings, we pray. And we can also pray for her. So let us begin. This is very serious. Even if ordinarily you have not been to church, you pray and you see how God will bless you. loving Heavenly Father. Once again, we glorify and we praise your name. Forgive us our sins. Wash us by the blood of thy Son. Sanctify us and make us worthy in your sight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind and cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst. Break the chains of wickedness and set us free. We invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, also against any form of destructions. The media broadcasting, keep it, Lord. The electric power, keep it, Lord. Our viewers online, we value them. Touch them, Lord. Break the chains of wickedness, Lord. Touch my lips with coals of fire, as you did touch those of Isaiah. 
put your words in me like you did put to Jeremiah and let these words penetrate every one of us in church and in my audience, the online viewers. And Father, may the Holy Spirit speak to us. May heaven come down to us, to all of us, to online viewers. The Lord, we shall be prepared when you come in the clouds of heaven. We shall shout and say hallelujah. This is the great God and Savior we have been waiting for. For we ask that in the mighty and blessed name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 12, starting from verses 1. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this met approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads or four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. As we ponder over this passage here, this was the Pentecostal church or the Apostolic church. And this is a period when the church existed in one of its purest forms when it enjoyed the favor of heaven. But as it enjoyed the favor of heaven, they went through fierce persecution. My dear viewers, this tells us that in spite of our belief in the Lord, you could be going through unpleasant experiences. So for the church here, when they went through this period here, they did what God has ever taught us. Any times of difficult, any periods of difficult, any moments of difficult, God is calling you to prayer. Actually, one author has put it that every difficult is a call to prayer. So the Bible tells us in verse 5, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The church had now a season of prayer. So if as an individual you are going through a serious challenge, God has knocked at your door and is telling you, have a season of prayer. If as a family you are seriously challenged, God has knocked at your family and is telling you, as a family, have a season of prayer. If as a church you are challenged, God is knocking at the church and is saying, have a season of prayer. So the Bible says they were not just praying, they were honestly praying. And in verse 6, heaven responds. The night before, Herod was to bring him out to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the sentries stood guard at the entrance. I want you to see how Peter was so securely kept. First of all, we were told there were four squads of four soldiers guarding Peter. And among that squad, we also had two soldiers this was actually not just a maximum prison, it was more than a maximum prison. Because even in our maximum prisons, the soldiers are outside, the prisoners are inside. For, but for this one here, Herod did not take chances. Where Peter was sleeping, the two soldiers were also sleeping there, one on this side and one on the other side. In fact, it is even thought that there were chains tied to the soldiers. So that if you want to run away, you'll be running away with the soldiers. It was more than a maximum prison. But beloved brothers and sisters, my viewers online, no maximum prison in this world can keep out God. As Peter was in a maximum prison, more than a maximum prison of our days here, because there were soldiers sleeping there, 
The church responded by praying earnestly, and the heaven responded. And see how heaven responds? And the heaven comes in in the last minute, what we call the 11th hour. They prayed and prayed and prayed, and now, on the night, which was on the eve of trial, just before Peter was to be now arraigned in court, there now the Bible tells us in verse 7, and I like it, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. The angel does not go out for the switch to switch it off. The angel himself comes with his own light. He gets there, gets into the prison, and quickly he strikes Peter on the side. And as he strikes him on the side, he says, Peter, quick, get up. He said, and as he does that, an angel does not have time to see how you tied it to one and do that. Angels don't do that kind of thing. The Bible says, as he strikes Peter on the side, and he tells Peter, get up. Immediately the chains just fall off. I like how heaven acts. And the Bible continues to tell us, in verse 8, Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and your sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him. Now, this angel here, who struck Peter and the chains fell off, this time, he does not order the clothes to get into Peter's body. Because he knew it was within the power of Peter to dress himself. So the lesson there for us is that God does miracles, but God does not do unnecessary miracles. When God comes here to new life, there is God's part, but there will always be a part for you to play. God will never move down here to do the work that is intended for you. I know even for me to get to new life here, there were elaborate arrangements. There was your part to do. But when it comes to performing miracles, like now the chains, most likely there was even a lock there, and maybe Herod himself had the lock. It called for a miracle. Where a miracle is called for, and the children of God have prayed, God does not hesitate to do a miracle. But again, God doesn't just perform miracles for the sake of miracles. So he told Peter, put on your clothes, put on your sandals, wrap yourself, because it did not call for a miracle. So Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a, a miracle or a vision. So you know what was happening? Nobody was known to escape from Herod's prisons. If you continue reading, you will re later on see that Herod had all of them who were guarding the prison. By the way, they were all executed. They died. I mean, how does he explain that? A prisoner with four squads of four soldiers, two sleeping between him, most likely with the chains tying them to the soldiers, how could they get, get out? With him, he must have thought this was an inside job. So he had them all executed. So Peter could not fathom that. How does a man get out of a Herod's prison? He may thought, no, this must be a vision I'm seeing. This is a lesson for us. If you make prayer a priority in your life, there will be miraculous interventions in your life. Angels will come and do things in your life till you will come to think that it's not reality, it is a vision. I remember a couple of years ago when I was doing a week of prayer in one of the churches here in Nairobi, they also planned for a night vigil. By the way, I'm not often excited about night vigils because I have a gift of sleep. Me, I don't look for sleep one or two hours the way you do. Me, I fall and sleep. So when they told me, I wasn't excited, but you know, as an obedient servant, I complied. Then one mama came and told me, 
I intend to be there in the night vigil, and I'm going to pray for my son who is a sickly. We have spent our fortune trying to restore his health in vain. I'm coming. I said, come, you come and cry to God. Then as the mama is speaking, the sickly son also comes. The sickly son also declares, mama, I'm also coming for the night vigil. I could see the mother was not amused. She wanted to pray, but because the son was sick, he wanted the son asleep as she's praying. So mama, maybe as a way of trying to put her off, he says, she says, what are you coming to pray for anyway? She said, you know, daddy promised me a car. Of course, a toy car. But the way I look at daddy, daddy seems to be broke. You know, children know when you are broke, if you didn't know. So it has taken me so long I've not got my car because I want my car. This night I'm going to pray that God will give money to daddy so that I get what? My car. Children, by the way, also have their own items before God. If they are not important to you, they are important to them. So, reluctantly, Mama accepted. Now we prayed. As we prayed, the mother also had a condition. She was constantly on headache. In fact, she was constantly on drugs. So the following day, Sunday now morning, she recognized that the headache was not there. So she said, I'll wait until the headache is there, then I'll take my drugs. The whole of that, that day, she did not witness that. The following day, when she woke up, the headache was not there. She also said, I'll wait until the headache resumes, then I'll also resume my drugs. On Tuesday morning, that's when she realizes the headache remained at the prayer meeting. She was forced to acknowledge that a miracle had taken effect. So on the Sunday morning, the father of the son had not come, but he had consented. So on Sunday when they go home, said, he received them and said, you are through with the church programs? They said, yes, we are through. You know the others who only see even prayers as just a church program. They don't see the power in it. Then something happened on Wednesday. One of his debtors, one of his debtors, he was doing real estate business, and the people really had his debts. But one of them called him, and he said, I want to pay you, so you invoice me so that I can pay you. Sure enough, he did an invoice to him, an invoice of Kenya shillings, 400,000. And from your faces, I can see it's very small money for you, but I accept it for now. Not sure whether he would accept it. So anyway, he did it to him. He said, anyway, let him pay what he can. That man now responded and he told him, no, you are wrong. Normally when you are paying whatever you want to pay for, you want to pay less or more? Less or more? If you are like me, I would wish to pay less. So the other man complained and he said, I don't owe you 400,000 Kenya shillings. I actually owe you 500,000 Kenya shillings. Eh? And he went ahead, he canceled that invoice. He did him a check of half a million. It is when he called the mama. You know when they came from church that Sunday, he said, you are through with the church programs? That's fine. Now he called the mama. Mama, come. I want us to meet in the house for a thanksgiving. But before we do the thanksgiving, tell me that night how had you prayed? Because the things that are happening here are not normal. I sent an invoice, not sure whether the man would accept that. That is what he owed me. He has canceled it. He has told me he owes me more and he has done me a check of half a million. So tell me, how did you pray? That's when my mom also called me and he told me things are happening from the night of prayer. One, my headache has gone. Two, the man who did not appear there, my husband, he has also seen a miracle until he has summoned me to suspend my day activities for Thanksgiving. But you know, that wasn't all. On Friday, another debtor now paid him half a million. That was Friday morning. Friday four, another one did him half a million. So in total, how much is that? 1.5 million. Now, just help me to decide 
Of course, ultimately, God knows who prayed and it happened. Do you think that was an answer to the mother's prayer or an answer to the son's prayer? Certainly, I believe it must be the son's prayer. Because the mother was going to pray for the sickness of the son. The son who wanted his toy car, he said, I know that is broke. So this night I'll spend it praying that God gives daddy money so that I get my car. I'm sorry, I never inquired whether he got his car. I hope he got his car. I want to tell you, the Bible here tells us, Peter thought he was seeing a vision. Peter thought he was dreaming. When you make prayer a priority, there is going to be miraculous intervention. Angels are going to have such a play in your life, and you are going to think that uh, you are dreaming, you are seeing a vision. So they fast, they, they fast, they fast, and the second guards, and they came to the iron gate leading to the city, and it opened uh, uh, for them by itself. So again, miracles resume. The gates that were so securely eh, placed. As they enter there, you know it wasn't a modern world. We do not have issues of these things of remote and automatic. It just opens by itself. And there was a guard there. Policemen are standing there, I'm imagining, very alert, with the eyes open. But you know, the angel passes there. Peter passes there. They don't recognize. You know, even these eyes, God has to command them to see, even when they are open. Then the Bible continues to tell me, the Bible tells us, when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel went to the world where it belongs, to the angels under normal circumstances. Do they belong in the world of the seen or the world of the unseen? Yes, the world of the unseen. So, the angel now says, this was a special emergency need. Because the church gathered and they were praying. So I appeared physically. I went to the bagger. I came to the sin wall. Now let me go to where I belong until the day of redemption when we can see the angels face to face and Jesus face to face. When the angel left him, verse 12 now, when this had dawned on him, okay, verse 11 first, then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. You know, until this time, Peter thought this was a vision. Who can never escape from such a prison? So when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and they were praying. This was an answer in response to a church that was praying, a group that was praying. Whenever the church of God needs to pray, whenever a group needs to pray, and they mean business, heaven will always respond. Heaven responded. But you know the response of heaven, when he went there, as he knocked the door, the servant girl Rhoda came to answer the door, and when she came there, Rhoda was so excited, she even forgot that Peter was still outside where it can even be insecure. Instead of opening the door for Peter to come, he runs, she runs and she says, the man you are praying for is not in prison. The man you are praying for, Peter is here. Eh? They said, Herod's prison? More than a maximum prison? They said, no, it cannot be. You are out of your senses. She insisted until they said then, it cannot be Peter, then you have seen a ghost of Peter. In other words, they were praying, but God did more than they were praying for. Perhaps they were praying that God spare uh, Peter's life so that at least eh, it's not a death sentence like James. Maybe they were praying that God just mitigate the effects of the sentence. But you know the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20, when you pray, God will not only answer you, but it will, it will be exceedingly, abundantly, above expectations eh, or even above what eh, we imagine. And that's what God did. Beloved brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, the same God who appeared to Peter when the church will come together to pray, 
when the church organizes a vigil like we are, we have today, I can assure you, God has already lined up the miracles for us as a church and as individuals. That same God, he can walk to any maximum prison today and he can get out any prisoner that he wants to get out if it so suits him. But I want to bring it to your attention. There is another prison more terrible than the prison of, of Peter. When we come to the book of John, chapter 8, verses 34 through 36, Jesus replied, Verily, truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. This is the most terrible prison we can ever have in the world. We have people who drink, they take alcohol, at the beginning of the year, they have even uh, uh, pledged uh, that they are going to quit, uh, but they find they cannot quit. I want to tell you why you don't quit. You are in prison. We have people who are immoral, even in this era of HIV positive, they say they wanted to lead, to have good morals, uh, but they find they are not able. There are families who are involved in domestic violence. They have sat in committees, they have discussed, they have said, let's put an end to this, but they find they are forever involved in, in, in this domestic violence. Why? You are a prisoner. And this prisoner here, the Bible tells us, in verse 36, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now, I just want us to ponder, an angel was sent to that prison of Peter. The Bible does not tell us it was the senior most angel. You know the name of the senior most angel? Gabriel. Gabriel does not go for small errands like that. The Bible does not tell us here Gabriel was sent. This was a small thing. The church was crying. Even said now, the church is crying, and they said, send one of the junior angels here from heaven from heaven to one and deliver. They didn't even send two angels. This is such a small task. By the way, in heaven there is an hierarchy of angels. They are the junior angels, and as we saw the other day, they are more powerful angels, the ones we call excel in strength. They are even the all-powerful angels. And finally, we have Gabriel. Of course, those are the senior most angels. Some things God does not send the senior most angels. Maybe you are a broker and you say, God, I need Kenya shillings, five million. Gabriel doesn't come for such small things. Just sends a junior angel. He touches maybe your customers here and there. Then you see money beginning to flow. And if you are not careful, again, you begin brand, uh, bragging. My entrepreneurial skills are very good. You forget when you are praying. And God went and, 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 and sent a junior angel. Or maybe when a student wants to improve in mathematics, chemistry, Son just sends a junior angel, just touches you and he says, let now maths get into the head and things begin working. But now, when it comes to sin, not even Gabriel can deliver you from sin. When it comes to delivery from sin, you want to quit smoking, you want to quit drinking, you want to quit immorality, you want to control your anger, that is the prerogative of Jesus and Jesus alone. Not even an angel will deliver you from there. And that's what the Bible says. When the Son sets you free, you are going to be free indeed. And that is the greatest freedom that we can ever attain here. Going and picking somebody from a maximum prison is not the greatest miracle. That one, a junior angel will do that. But for you, to turn from your immorality, you become now a morally upright person. One who is now involved in drug abuse and alcoholism, and you become a sober person. The heavens must have come down. If you are used to being disobedient, now you become an humble, obedient child of God. The heavens must have come down. At one time, there was an evangelistic campaign, and one woman believed in God. And she joined in the church, and she became an active member of the church. But one habit remained with her. She could take some wine. That continued for some time. 
but she continued actively serving the Lord. Then one day there was a revival, and this text here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, when it came vividly, it was articulated, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, she saw that drunkards are not going to heaven. That's when she recognized if Jesus came in her present condition, she wouldn't make it to heaven. And she wanted to go to heaven. That day, she said goodbye to alcohol, goodbye to wine. I want to believe there is somebody here who is saying goodbye to immorality, goodbye to domestic violence, goodbye to drug abuse, goodbye to witch doctors, goodbye to stealing the tithe of the Lord, goodbye to breaking the Sabbath of the Lord. So she said goodbye, and she said in the name of Jesus, I will not go back to my wine again. Praise the Lord. But you know, it's one thing to promise. It's another thing to make it a reality. As she retired to bed that evening, the desire to drink was aroused in her as never before. She was like, oh, if only I could take one sip, then I could sleep. Actually, sleep departed. She was so much troubled. By the way, don't laugh at drunkards when they are quitting. They have what we call withdrawal symptoms. They will even have a headache. They will even not be able to work. So she actually came out of bed, went to the fridge where there was some wine there. She reached out for the bottle of wine, but as she does that, a voice spoke to her, today you made a vow to God, you will never go back to that. Then she went and back, sat back at that sofa. Then as she sat there again, the desire came to her like never before. Then she said to herself, just only this one time, she reached out again to that bottle. As she reached out to the bottle again, the voice spoke vividly, you made a vow to God, you will never go back to drinking. Again, she came back to the sofa. And then she was aroused as never before. She said, surely, just one more time. She reached out, how many times now? Three times. But you know, as she was trying to resist, heaven was also working. Then a power hit her from heaven. As a power hit her from heaven, she fell to the floor, and she lay in there for several hours. When she woke up, it was approaching dawn, and by that time, all the desires of drinking had gone, and she was now delivered from that moment. The devil does not let go easily, but Jesus, the master deliverer, as you are making your faint efforts, you are struggling with sin, the most powerful agents of the Holy Spirit, God will send that, whether the easy way or the hard way. All I know is that all my viewers, all who are sitting here, that thing you are struggling with, as long as you hold on to Jesus, is the master deliverer and is going to deliver you. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. There is power, power, wonder working power in the prayer. Precious blood of the Lord. We are telling the Lord as we start a happy new year. You are telling God there are habits. I want Jesus, the master deliverer, to deliver me out of anything that is contrary to the will of God. You are telling God that raise up your hand. My hand is also up. I know as a preacher, I also need to be delivered. I will even ask that you stand. One more time, you are telling God, I don't just want to be a church member. I want to gain the victory over sin by the most powerful agents of the Holy Spirit. Raise up your hand. May God bless you abundantly. Uh, hands down, as we do the closing song. We want to do the closing song. Then I will offer a closing prayer.
My viewers online, I'm also going to pray for you. You can join in, in the song if it is appropriate. Three four zero, Jesus saves. Okay, okay. So as they start, one more time, just be tuned. You will start. Who is telling God, I don't just want to be a church member. I want the power of God to deliver me from every form of sin. I'm a preacher, but my hand is up. For sure, I want that deliver, the deliverance. Okay, hands down. I have another question. It is possible you were once baptized, but you know you are backslidden. And you want deliverance. And it's possible you have never been baptized. So I want that before that group raises up their hand, all those that have chosen to be baptized, come and stand behind me here. Just come and stand over here. Because I'm going to pray with you. Just come over. In fact, come this side here where we can see you. These are heroes. When you see them like this, they are fought against their evil habits, and God has given them the courage. Okay, now I have one more request. You are here in the congregation or in the online audience, and you know that you were baptized, but somehow you are backslidden, or you have never even been baptized, or you have not even been keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. Or you were baptized, but you were not immersed in water. You have never, you did not enjoy the Bible baptism. I will ask that you raise up your hand and I will offer a prayer for you and your lives will never be the same. God has sent me for that purpose. So you raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. Thank you for those hands. This is between you and your God. Thank you for those hands. And when you raise up the hand, it doesn't go down. It goes up. The Bible says... If you are afraid to acknowledge, God is also going to be afraid of you. So you raise up your hand. You were once baptized, but you know you are backslidden. Or you have never been baptized. Or you have not been keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. Or you did not enjoy the Bible baptism. Like the heroes that God has called you, as we do this song here, I want you to walk, to walk up front here. And I'm going to offer a prayer for you. And your life will never be the same again. You are telling the Lord, I don't just want to remain a church member. I want that victory. I want to overcome every sin in me, particularly at this beginning of the year. What a way to start Happy New Year so that uh, the slavery that has long held you, Jesus will help you to break the same. Uh, if you are telling God that, you raise up your hand. My viewers online, you raise up your hand. Even me as a preacher, I'm telling God, I want to be totally free from sin. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we glorify and we praise your name. You did a brilliant delivery for Peter, who was in a maximum prison. But Lord, we have seen a more terrible prison, the prison of sin. As many hands as have been raised up in the church here, Online viewers, deliver us from lying. Deliver us from immorality. Deliver us from drug abuse and alcoholism. Deliver us from domestic violence. Deliver us from stealing even from your tithe, from breaking the commandments, including your Sabbath. Deliver us, Lord, from witch doctors. Deliver us from every kind of sin. And Father, these ones that are getting baptized today, I want to pray that you grant them the victory in their life. These that have come up front here to start a new way, a new journey, and possibly get baptized. Father, break those chains, Lord. Secure them in your kingdom. And also meet us at the point of our needs. For we ask that in the mighty and blessed name of Jesus. Amen.